like to call the meeting to order, a regular meeting on Monday, September 14, 2015. Before we actually begin, there is a special meeting to notify you all following this regular meeting. So please join Councilman Pazillo in the Pledge of Allegiance and stay standing for the invocation. <coughs> Almighty Father, please all look over all of us up here on this dais tonight that we make good decisions for our citizens and for all that are affected. Also, please provide a safe ride home for all those in here today and watch over those of our men and women in uniform serving throughout the country and also within our cities. And again, in thy name, amen. amen. <coughs> Thank you, Councilman Pazillo. And we are all around the dais this evening. So we'll go to communications. We have one item tonight. The council will receive an update on the mid-decade special census that begins October 1st, 2015. And James Williamson, special census project manager, will present. <coughs> Mayor Lord, um, Vice Mayor and Council, Christopher Baker, Development Services Director. It's my pleasure to introduce to you Mr. James Williamson. He's on loan to development services from the finance department, so thank you, Larry. Um, and he is uh, heading up our efforts, Goodyear's effort on the special, special census. And uh, he's doing a fantastic job, and we thought it would be important to brief the council this evening on, um, on the accomplishments that have been made and what the citizens can look forward to in the, in the coming month and a half. Great, thank you. Good evening, everybody. Mayor Lord, council members. Okay. All right, so we're going to do a little uh, quick update here on the special census, our mid-decade special census. Uh, there we go. All right. Goodyear is counting on you. <coughs> That's a little slogan we have going on. Kind of gets, uh, gets right to the point. Goodyear is counting on everybody so we can do a complete population count and then update our numbers for the uh, shared revenue with the state. All right, so break this up into a few sections here. Uh, census update, uh, what's happened so far? Uh, so we did uh, advertise the uh, census worker position, which was a big requirement that the Census Bureau placed on the city to recruit all the workers that are necessary. Uh, we started that uh, recruitment about May 15th or so. Uh, we ended that about July 31st. Uh, another thing that's been accomplished here, we did have to open up a uh, local office for the Census Bureau for their special census. Uh, we have that opened over there at uh, 1300 South Litchfield, Building 9. That is in the old Lockheed Martin Building, all here in Goodyear. It's not the easiest building to find if you go in the main entrance, but there is a nice side entrance uh, that will get you right to the building so it is easily accessible. Uh, it is fully staffed and operational, has been since about August 3rd when they took possession. Uh, they've got clerical staff in there. They've got uh, uh, office managers and assistant managers. And it's uh, basically 8 a.m. to uh, approximately 9 p.m., Monday through Saturday. And then once they are uh, out on the ground, there will be some Sunday hours also. But pretty much any time somebody's on the ground counting, there will be staff at the uh, local census office. All right, so uh, some more of what has happened so far. Uh, we did uh, finish up our uh, recruitment advertising campaign. Uh, we did get a, our goal was set at 589 applicants by the Census Bureau. Uh, by the time we were done with our excellent advertising campaign, 1,033 was the total number we finally got to. A little bit more what's happened so far. Uh, Census Bureau has conducted the testing they needed to do. Uh, besides filling out a, an employment application, all census workers do have to take a uh, what they call a written test. It's multiple choice. Uh, about 30 questions or so, time test, 30 minutes, uh, basic skills, knowledge kind of thing. So they would have to pass that test in order to be eligible to work for the Census Bureau. And the higher they score, the more likely they are to be uh, hired. Uh, by the time we, it was all said and done, 485 of our uh, applicants passed that test. So we definitely uh, had quite a few. Uh, currently what's happening right now, 
Uh, the Census Bureau is in the middle of doing their hiring of everybody. Uh, about 25 crew leaders, you would call those the, uh, uh, the team leaders on the ground. Uh, there's going to be approximately 170 enumerators. So those are actually the workers that will go door to door, um, you know, asking questions of the residents and filling out the survey forms. Obviously, they report back to their crew leaders, who then report back to field operations supervisors and office managers. Uh, we are also in the middle right now of uh, doing our educational and promotional advertising campaign. Uh, in the past, we, it was more along the lines of um, we were advertising for the job. By advertising for the job, we did generally just let people know the census was coming. Now we're, we've moved into basically to where uh, we're not advertising the job anymore. We are advertising the census itself. Uh, now brings me to what will be happening. Uh, so we've got the Census Bureau. They'll be conducting training. Everybody has to go through uh, training. Uh, crew leaders, it's four days. Uh, enumerators, it's three full days. That is paid training. Uh, and it is mandatory. All workers have to go through all the training to be eligible to be hired. Uh, the special census itself, the big day, that's census day, October 1st. Uh, they will be starting, uh, it looks like no matter what, they will get that, that start date going, and that will be in the morning, and it will be all-inclusive of, of the city. Uh, operations will continue until completed. Uh, they kind of, at this point, Census Bureau is estimating they'll be done by Thanksgiving. But it will go on as long as it needs. Uh, here's uh, the census process itself. <clears throat> how it's going to happen. Uh, everywhere, all at once, and that's not a joke. So I've asked them if they had any kind of uh, layout of the city or if they're going to uh, you know, have certain areas part of the city at, at certain times to do the counting, and the answer is no. They're going to do it all at once, everywhere at once, until it's done. It is a physical door-to-door -door count. There is no mail-in. There is no website to go to and fill out the survey. The enumerators have to go physically door to door. Uh, they do that, number one, to make sure the physical address exists on their map, is, is there in front of them. Number two, it's to knock on the door and talk to the residents and fill out the forms. Uh, they will make several visits. They will leave a note on the door. They call it a, uh, what do they call it? Ah, they have a special term for it, notice, notice of visit, I believe, is what they call it. Um, they will leave a note on the door. It will have phone number. That phone number you see up on the screen is actually the local census office phone number that we can publicly make available. Uh, so if a resident's not home, because, you know, if you're like some of us, you're out 8 to 5, that nobody's going to be at your house because everybody's out working, doing their business. Uh, they will leave a note. It will leave a phone number. You can call back for more information on how to maybe schedule an appointment uh, or at least, you know, um, you know, more information how the census is, will get back to you to, to get you counted. Uh, it is a basic population count. Uh, they estimate it will take about 10 minutes or so. Uh, that is, you know, totally uh, depends on how many people are in the home. If there's just one person, it's probably a, a two-minute survey. Uh, that is just a little part of the survey itself. Uh, it's, it's nowhere near as long as the decennial census. Uh, the mid-decade one is, is pretty small. Um, essentially, that's just the front part that the enumerator fills out. Uh, mm -hmm. But the main questions are name, uh, relationship to the homeowner, uh, gender of the person, the uh, age and date of birth, uh, race and ethnicity. That is, that is what the, the population count involves. Uh, here's just a little bit more how it's going to happen, the process. Uh, all census workers will be sworn employees of the U.S. Census Bureau. Not, a, not an employee of Goodyear, the employment employee of the U.S. Census Bureau. Uh, they will all have been fingerprinted. Uh, they will all have passed a background check. And they will all have a, uh, a, a Census Bureau-issued picture ID with their, their first and last name on it. Uh, the... <clears throat> the, IDs, the IDs themselves, they will come in something similar to this. They'll be wearing them around their neck or what have you, clipped to their shirt, so it will be visible. It will be a picture ID. I do have some copies you can look at, look at if you like. I just promised the Census Bureau I wouldn't electronically put them on anything. Uh, but if you're curious, you're more than welcome to look at the badge. Uh, but all, all enumerators will have that badge. Uh, we are also doing something. Uh, we've, uh, we'll supply the enumerators with uh, 
little shirt here, just Goodyear Special Census and our logo, nice bright color. Obviously, hopefully they're seen on the street when they're walking and uh, makes it easier you know, as they're going to be pedestrians. And just our little uh, little logo on the back there, slogan, Goodyear is counting on mm -hmm. you. So we'll, we'll uh, give these to the enumerators uh, just so it'll be a little bit easier to spot them out on the street there. And then here's the big stuff here, why we're doing this, uh, the results. Uh, so preliminary count results will come one to two weeks after operations conclude. Uh, we will get the official totals by March 1st, 2016. Uh, last thing I wanted to do is definitely make sure I, uh, you know, uh, point out to all of you guys here that uh, this has been a team effort uh, here in the city of Goodyear. I might be the project manager, but I am working with lots of people. Uh, just the other day, the mayor and I made a video that will be <laughs> hopefully not, not up on our website anytime soon. We're not going to see that today, are no, we? Oh, thank you. Don't happen. No, <laughs> I know my heart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I was trying to think, uh, if I try to name people, I'm going to forget somebody. If I try to name departments, I'm, I'm definitely going to forget one. But uh, with the exception of, I believe, probably the uh, wastewater treatment plants and, and those guys, I've worked with just about everybody else. Um, development services, communications, um, the recreation department's been a huge help, the ballpark. Um, I can go on and on and on and I won't waste your time, but everybody I, I've reached out to has helped me greatly with the project, with, <laughs> with nothing more, with passion to get it done. And then I just want to make sure they're recognized because it's not just me, it's a lot of people doing this. Other than that, we'll open up for questions if anybody has anything. Councilman Vazello? Yes, sir. Door-to-door -door count. What do you do with the gated communities or even Pebble Creek that I would think is a problem getting in there and walking door-to-door? -door? I think you turned it off. It might have just gone off like Bill. Oh, there, there, there you go. I don't think I hit that button. Okay, so door-to-door, uh, -door, we did give a list of um, uh, the gated communities, the property manager names and what have you, to the local census office, one of the first things they requested. Also with the, um, they have different names for them, but I'll just use the, the prison as an example. They do count the people in the prison. They won't go tier by tier and, and count them. They'll just do it administratively. But we provided contact information, locations are there. Also with the... Uh, the idea of hiring people that live in Goodyear to be the enumerators, lots, lots of the, the enumerators themselves will be Pebble Creek residents and residents of those other communities. So hopefully it'll be pretty easy. But they've already made arrangements to have gates opened, okay. things like that accessible, definitely. Okay, so I, I guess that gets, the, gets my uh, question answered. You'll have accessibility to get in there. And, and oh, yeah. Oh, have. yeah. Okay. I just want the long raid telling you all of that. But okay. definitely they will have accessibility. Councilman Osborne. Is there going to be a, I know you have October 1st is when, when you start, um, for our snowbirds, that may not be for another couple of weeks. Um, if they come home and, and they find that, that notice on their door, is, is there going to be a drop dead date that they could call in? Because I know if we're not, you know, really officially seeing things till March, right. do you have a drop dead date that that information won't be done? Not an exact date. The date will be when they're done. I hate, I hate to put it that way, but at least as of right now, uh, they, their, I guess theory would be they'll be done November 19th is when they, they, oh. they predict the counting to be done. And then a, a week's worth of cleanup and finishing up the operation, that's the, you know. So many of the snowbirds will be back by then. Right. So that, okay, hopefully. good. Hopefully. Thank and you. if, if, uh, if they are here, they're counted. Um, if they're not here and they don't come back till December and they can't call that notice, you know, uh, the, the note on their door, they just won't be counted, unfortunately. Councilman Campbell? I've got several questions. Um, did we make up the form to use, or are we using what the Census Bureau uses all the time? Yes, ma'am. It is, it is a special census form. It's actually got its own ID number on there, SC10, I believe, but it is, it is the special census form that they're bringing with them. We, don't, we, don't, we did not make it. We have no input on that. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Yes, ma'am. And my second question is, when you uh, read a little bit about it, it's so little I couldn't read it. Right. 
Um, you said something about what's the relationship to the homeowner. Right. D does the person have to own the home to be counted, or are you no, going to count renters? That was that was my word for homeowner. Okay. They actually everybody were... gets counted. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Thank you. And then no um, problem. My other question is, uh, whose maps are you using? Right. So we did the city itself. We received maps from the Census Bureau, basically city boundaries and what have you, to well several large maps. We confirmed all the boundaries are correct, sent them back to the census. They were happy with that. They'll count within our boundaries. They haven't shown me them, but they do have their own maps up on their walls in the census office, and those are the maps they're going by. Those are like, uh, for lack of a better word, like grid maps, but you know, yeah, that show all the addresses, it. that show the streets, that show mm -hmm. everything. Those are Census Bureau maps. They're, they're their maps, but yes, they ran it by us so that we can attest that it is our city limits and yes. they're not going to cut off any part of it. Correct. Perfect. And they also, uh, real quick to add to that, they do count what they see. So we are building homes currently that may or may not have had one street on, you know, a street address or something at the yeah, time. Yeah, that's true. They count what they see. So if they're going down a street, there's three more houses on that street that aren't on their map. They're right in front of them. They will count those homes. Yeah, because we do have some subdivisions yes. that are being built uh, all over. Yes. And the streets aren't on a map. Right. And just part of them are done, and the rest are being constructed. So right. we want to be sure to count those. They will. My last question is, and I know that it's probably way too late, but I'm just concerned about um, folks going door to door and not really be identifiable and good enough as a census person, when we just a month or two ago had someone posing as a Southwest gas employee going door to door, trying to get in someone's home. And after you show me that gorgeous color shirt and Goodyear is so tiny whiny here, right. you can't really read it. Right. I just, uh, we either need to publicize that shirt, saying what they're going to be wearing mm -hmm. or something, because we're going to run into residents that aren't going to believe it. Right. And that's, that worries me because then we'll lose that count. And we, everybody, everybody counts for right. us. Right. So totally agree. that's what I'm worried with. Right. And we're, we, we are definitely worried about it also, uh, we being the Census Bureau local office people, and then obviously us because we do need to get a complete count. Uh, the shirt, sh the shirt sh should help. Uh, second thing would be the badge itself. Um, I will show you guys a copy if you'd like to see it, but it is. I don't know. I don't, I, I mean, I no don't know. No problem. It's just, a, just... it's just a badge. It says Census Bureau. It is a picture yeah. ID, uh, and it does have their first and last name on it. Well, maybe we can do a, a scenario on our West City website maybe or something and say, look for these people. This is what right. they're going to have so that we can educate our folks. Yes, ma'am. The gated communities we're not going to have to worry so much about because right. their, their neighbors are going to be doing the census on them. And they're going to be able to identify who those are. But I'm worried about North Subdivision, Historic Goodyear, all of those right. that are not going to be receptive to someone knocking on the door saying, I, I'm, I want to ask information from you. Right. And so that's it. Yes, well, they, they could call the office that number, right? Because there's somebody at the right. always answering. The, the enumerators will have the local so office maybe number. Maybe there's a way that they can maybe, give them the yeah. number. They can go call the office and verify it. Numbers on our website, I, w yeah. I will uh, have it issued, well, issued, but I'll give it to all the employees in, in Goodyear. We'll, we'll write a nice little informational email about it. Okay. Plus, you know, the front desk, the customer service workers, um, definitely will have the number to the local office. So anybody that calls in worried about somebody at their door, we can get them to the right people to confirm by name who they are. Right. And then so. if they call the city hall, our receptionist will certainly say, yes, yes we have census folks out right. all over town and... Right, Most and, and likely, part of our, you know, our, our advertising, our yeah. our current campaign advertising, granted we're just starting it now because we didn't want to start too early, but it's, you know, census is coming all of October, so hopefully people will see it. There's a postcard being mailed out to everybody, utility bill stuffer, uh, our website, you know, e-blasts, in-focus, newspaper ads. We're covering it, That's but your, your, your fears are definitely legitimate, and we'll have to see how it works out. Carolyn? Yeah, I, I just wanted to clarify, too. These people are not going into the homes. Oh, they, they never ask to go beyond the, the door, right. and which is part of the, the thing that scared people. Right. And they're not asking for Social Security oh, numbers or anything that would identify them, so they're not right. really being asked for private personal information, which I think is, is helpful as well. 
Thank you for bringing that up, Councilman Holman. Uh, Councilman Stipp. The only question that I had or a potential concern, I think it was raised by Councilmember Osborne, is the is collecting that uh, winter visitor count. Um, you know, they're, uh, I think it depends on where they're coming from or, you know, whether they actually get down here, um, you know, in time, you know, whether they actually wait until just before. You're talking nothing. about our out-of-staters coming in? That yeah. Tim, right, right. Are we sending anything out? Uh, that was my question. Yeah, is, what do we have? Uh, a collection? A, a tra uh, I always say trash, <laughs> it's not a great word for it. We send bills out to people that even when they're gone, there is certain things that- Yeah, has this gone out in the sanitation bill that- Sanitation right, bill? Right, I said utility bill, but that's okay. the sanitation and or water customers. Uh, it started last week and it continues through this whole month because it's done in cycles. So there's some people getting it this week, some next week, some after, so. Telling them that it's coming? Oh I mean, yes, what, how, do, how does that 1st. message sound? So if I'm an, if I'm an out-of-stater, Right, right. How does that sound to me? Uh, well, it says the census October 1st is when the counting starts. Uh, then it gives some, I of course didn't bring one with me. Um, this is just our general design here. I know this is small. I'm just getting these things in my hands. So oh, no, that's I don't, okay. didn't have things to put up on the screen too much. Uh, but it gives phone number, uh, you know, information hotline, uh, gives website address, which has more information. And then we do have some information about kind of what I went over about the picture ID, um, you know, their census workers, their fingerprinted FBI kind of background check, uh, and just, you know, that we're doing a population count. So it gives some information, it gives a start date, gives you a place to go for more information. So if anybody, you know, gets one of those in their, uh, you know, uh, sanitation bill and they're out of state or something, they'd be able to find more information rather quickly. Oh, all right, then a follow up to that and, and uh, this sounds like such a machine that, you know, we're going to hit everything. We don't have a plan. We're just going to walk walk right. the streets. Right. Are they able then to tell us when it's all said and done how many homes that they did not get an answer from? I, and is that part of the package? Right. Uh, one thing about working with the Census Bureau, they are not very forthcoming with information. I'm I haven't that, asked yeah. that specific <laughs> question. Uh, you know, um, they're going to give us a complete count. Uh, they didn't tell me they were going to give us who they didn't count. I'll be more than happy to find out and see if that would be part of the equation or not. I, um, they're obviously not going to be able to say, well, we were at this house and right. we think that there's four people. I mean, I get that, but the number of places that they did not get a reply from, mm -hmm. you know, we talked earlier tonight about the, you know, voter apathy and 25% of the people vote. Well, holy smokes, if people don't care that they get counted, I don't know that they really realize the importance of this for us as a community. So if there's any way for us to be able to capture that later on, I think it might be important. I don't know. I mean, somebody a lot smarter on this may be able to fill in the blanks for me. Council Member Stipp, I may add one thing that may uh, allay your uh, council's general um, anxiety about this. The enumerators have the ability, if nobody's answering the door, if they put the door hanger on, as, as uh, James indicated, if nobody's responsive there, but the neighbor is at the time that they're counting, they can ask the neighbor, hey, is the house next door occupied and how many residents, how many people live there? And they can mark that down on their ballot and that goes in their account. Oh, it does? Yes, sir. So um, there is a there is some flexibility. The enumerators have some flexibility to do that. Okay. Good. That's satisfying. Councilman Osborne. I'm sorry. I had one other question, and we may have been told this a while back, and I just don't remember. So back to the um, the out of state. We're calling them residents. Is there a cutoff? If and I don't know within the within the questionnaire. Are they being counted in their other state and they're being counted here? I mean, or is there, I mean, is that question asked? Are you here six months of the year? I mean, are we going to be, you know what I mean? Some of them may not even count as being a full-time resident, so. Um, in order to be, uh, to, to be counted, um, as a Goodyear resident, regardless of if you live somewhere else, mm -hmm. um, you need to reside in the city for six months and one day. One day, huh? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? 
Well, thank you very much. It was a great presentation. We're all excited about this beginning uh, and the end result, I guess, is what we are very, most curious about. So thank you so much. And thank you. To thank the team for us. All right. Now we're going to go on. It's time for the citizens who would like to address the city council on a non-agenda item. And I do have one card. So I'm looking for Janet Kirschbaum, and she's going to be speaking about traffic. And as you come up, would you uh, please, I think you've been up here before us, uh, Janet, so um, just want you to know we can respond to criticism, we can request that the staff investigate, report on the matter, we can request the matter be scheduled on a future agenda. You have three minutes when the yellow light, uh, the yellow light and the buzzer will let you know when you have 30 seconds left to speak. You're an old hat at this, so I know that you're going to do quite well. You have the floor. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Council. I ask to speak tonight on a couple of items concerning traffic in the city of Goodyear. First, a couple of weeks ago, I called Council Member Campbell's office to advise her of a situation. She was on vacation and was put through to her assist, and I was put through to her assistant. And I have to read this because otherwise I okay. go off. Um, I told the assistant of the problem at the intersection of Indian School and Bullard Avenue where the hedges had grown so large and you could not see the oncoming traffic when driving westbound on Indian School to turn southbound on Bullard. Within 24 hours, a, a kind gentleman from Parks and Recreation Department called me to inquire as to what the problem was. Within a couple of days, we happened to be at that intersection, and sure enough, it was cut down. The problem was eradicated. What a quick response from all concerned and so very appreciated. Um, and also, regarding the traffic on Bullard between Indian School and the I-10, it would really be appreciated if we could get the traffic signals kind of synchronized. That's that. Now, when we drive on Indian School now um, at Bullard, we can say thank you, Council Member Campbell's assistant and Parks and Recreation Department. Just as we do when we're on I-10 in the multi-lane part, we say thank you, Mayor Kavanaugh, for the ease of this driving. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Call any time. <laughs> well, we're, we're glad you're answering the phone, Wally. Okay. Well, I was gone. It's Lauren. Oh, we want so to thank Lauren, Lauren for doing that. Well, good on Lauren. She's not here. She's out of town right now. But right. We must yeah. wiggle. Thank her. And thank her. Absolutely. Are there any other, uh, uh, anybody in the audience would like to speak on a non-agenda item? Okay. Then we're going to move on. And uh, will the, uh, the Deputy city, city Clerk please read the consent agenda items 6.1 and 6.2 by title only, please. 6.1, approved draft minutes of a regular meeting held on August 24, 2015 and a regular meeting held on August 31, 2015. Item 6.2, approve the acceptance of a Water Infrastructure Finance Authority drinking water non-matching grant for planning and design technical assistance in the amount of $19,760 and grant the city manager or designee the authority to sign the agreement. Thank you. Does anyone from the public wish to remove an item from the consent agenda? Does anyone on the council wish to remove an item from consent agenda? Councilman Stiff? I just have a question. All right, question on which one? It's actually for the attorney on 6.1. Um, I was not present at the meeting on the 24th and obviously was on the phone on the 31st is there do I have to not vote because I wasn't here uh, this is more procedural and I've heard two or three different versions of this answer so I'm asking officially tonight yeah. what, is the, what the answer is what's huh? the real answer what's the answer we're going with today <laughs> madam mayor members of the council I have never been asked that question um, well I can tell you we they I can tell you since 2005 they're voting on the phone yeah, yeah so we've I'm, always yeah, voted. Our, our, our practice has always been that, that even if you miss the meeting, anything. you vote on the minutes. You still so, vote on the minutes. Okay. Yeah. That's been our past practice. Right, but, sorry uh, to stump you. This I'm going to read my rules of procedure uh, before the next meeting. And just awesome. All right. That's All right. Great. So thank you for yeah. asking the question. Could I have a motion a second to approve the consent agenda? I move second. I heard a motion by Councilman Campbell and a second by Councilman Holman. Roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Loritano? Aye. Council Member Osborne? Aye. Council Member Pazillo? Aye. 
Council Member Campbell? Aye. Council Member Stipp? Aye. Council Member Homan? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. Passes 7 0. Great, let's go to the business. The first item, 7.1 on business, is to consider approving the use of the budgeted fiscal year 16 fleet replacement funds. Mark Flynn, Municipal Services Manager, to present. Welcome, Mark. Uh, Mayor, members of the council, thank you very much. We appreciate the opportunity to visit with you this evening. I'm actually going to just introduce my colleague, Charles Schneider. <clears throat> Charles is the uh, fleet superintendent. November will celebrate his third anniversary with us, and we'll let him provide a little bit of detail this evening and he'll be available to answer any questions. Great. Thank you very Welcome, much. Charles. Um, Mayor, members of the council, thank you. Uh, today uh, for the opportunity to come back before you uh, to discuss the FY16 fleet replacement plan. Um, tonight I'm seeking your approval to spend uh, over $500,000 with three uh, different vendors um, in order to execute the FY16 fleet replacement plan. Uh, these vendors are state contracted uh, through the state of Arizona, of course, uh, courtesy Chevrolet, Midway Chevrolet, and Freightliner. I'm available if you have any questions. Okay, I'm sorry, but I thought there was going to be more than that in the presentation. So, are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? All right, could I have a motion and a second to approve the use of the budgeted fleet replacement funds in the general fund and, and water, wastewater, and sanitation enterprise funds for the purchase of vehicles to fulfill the FY16 fleet replacement plan? Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. I heard a motion by Councilman, I mean, Vice Mayor Laura Tano and, was it you? and uh, Councilman uh, Osborne. Open for council discussion. Councilman Stipp. 57 vehicles is in the staff report, and I know you listed who the different vendors are for the different quantities. And I'm not looking for a rundown of the total 57, but can you just kind of generalize? Uh, are we talking about 50 police cars and I mean what kind of number what does 57 represent sure councilman Stipp, uh, absolutely 11 uh, vehicles are in police and fire uh, specifically uh, nine on the police um, and then two in the fire department and then uh, we have three sanitation rear loaders uh, for our, our sanitation department <coughs> uh, we have a, a couple um, uh, backhoe tractors our uh, for our water distribution, uh, and then engineering inspection, uh, three vehicles, building inspection, four vehicles, and those are uh, most likely uh, just general pickup trucks, Chevy 1500s. Uh, and then uh, specifically a lot like service bodies in our water production uh, on the environmental side of the house, which are in dire need. Uh, and I appreciate you guys approving the, the budget for the uh, enterprise funded. Uh, because they are in dire need of replacement. So um, for the most part, it's 11 vehicles in our public safety. The rest are in, in a you know, general government type enterprise. Hopefully that answer your question. Big dollar, any of these single big dollars? Yes, sir. Um, about $275,000 for a sanitation rear loader. Uh, we're getting three this year. And that's the $750,000 that we're going to spend with Freightliner. Um, we're also buying a VACON truck for our, our wastewater collection, and that's about $315,000 to $320,000. Thanks. Any other questions? Yes, Councilman Campbell. Well, my question is following Councilmember Stipp. So you're going to buy nine police, uh, police department vehicles. What are they? Police cars? Are yes, we getting some more black and white cars? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then what are we? Huh? There, there'll be police patrol. Please Ta patrol. Black Perfect. and white Tahoes. Perfect. And what are the two fire apparatus that we're buying, and how much is that? One is a uh, brush truck for, um, uh, it's a replacement of Unit 211, uh, and then one is a trailer for the fire and department. The brush truck is being, is replacing another brush truck? Yes, it's, it's exceeded its lifespan, and the cost is roughly around, our, we're budgeted roughly around $57,000. Do you know? Do we know where that's going to be? Where it's going to be located? Well, I Which think one? It's it's. I'm sorry. Are do we, we want to know where it's huh? going? What neighborhood? Yeah. Are we? The current, the current brush truck 211 is the one slated for replacement. It'll replace like and kind, and I believe right now that unit is 
being used at multiple locations as needs arise. Perfect. The city. Okay, great. Okay, super. It's two enough. Sorry? Is two enough? Two, two is what we're authorized for. I think it was thank dependent on whether or not they wanted to expand the way they were providing those services. Okay, thank you. That's it. Thank you very much. Councilman Pazello. I think I know the answer, but just for the record, this is all part of the budget process, uh, a capital replacement fund that was approved and scheduled out, and you met all procurement procedures and policies as far as identifying who gets the contracts for these. Yes, sir. Is that okay? Thank you. Any other question? Yes, Councilman Stipp. Just a quick follow up on that. I'm trying to rack my brain. We never saw the list. We just saw a no, vehicle replacement, right? We just saw a line that said vehicle replacement. We never, we weren't ever provided a list. Councilman Stipp, I, I believe at one point we did present the, the replacement. That's very possible. I'm, I'm, I'm not arguing that. A period of 10 years is what the forecast has been. And this was done in cooperation and coordination with the finance department. We were looking at, at what the fleet side of the information was telling us was necessary for replacement. And then we coordinated with the finance folks to deal with how we were going to be able to fund those components for the long term. Maybe we could do this, uh, the city manager, just as a thought, um, that on this presentation, which we're reading, could we just say note your budget under vehicle replacement budget planning general fund? Do you know what I'm saying? So that um, the confidence is here on the dais that because they don't, we don't have a map. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Memories, we have a problem with memories here. I know that, <laughs> all of us, it's just not me. So um, that would give us a, a cue then to look at the budget. We all have our budget books and go back to, uh, to that. Did you understand my um, request? Y yes, Mayor. And in the um, uh, staff report, and I was looking at the date, because it has been some time, you're absolutely right. It was uh, November 10th, 2014, when we went through the 10-year uh, general fund fleet replacement, so it's it's been some time ago. But the reference is is um, uh, absolutely we could we can make yeah. those notations. I appreciate that, and then that probably would eliminate all most of these questions. Right. And I have to say, Mr. Schneider, you know your business. Nice presentation. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. All right. So uh, we're ready for a vote on this. So all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. The ayes have it. Thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate your time. You're welcome. Go to 7.2 on the business is to consider approving the preliminary plat for Pebble Creek Marketplace. Uh, well, I don't see Joe Schmidt, so. Yes, he's there. Oh, I didn't see you, He's, Joe. he's behind the post. Our long-range planner to present. <laughs> Mayor Lord, Vice Mayor and Council, Christopher Baker, Development Services, and uh, Joe is going to make the presentation for you as well. Uh, Rebecca and I had a couple of, um, Rebecca Zook, Engineering Director, and I had a couple of comments that we wanted you to make. You always welcome, Richard. So thank thank you. Thank you. Um, first of all, we are excited, and we are excited about the Pebble Creek Marketplace project. The plat that's coming before you this evening creates eight lots, seven of which are for other users, uh, which are to be determined, and one of the lots is, in fact, for Winco. And I would like to say uh, that we appreciate the investment that Grace Development and Winco is making in our community, and it's important to the city and our citizens. And as such, we in Development Services desire and want to and are partnering with the developer and engineer to, to help make this happen. In fact, we are committed, we have committed ourselves to expedited reviews and approvals to make sure that this project continues to move forward in a very positive fashion. So we're looking forward to working with Mr. Grace and his team. And uh, after all, frankly, their success is our success. Rebecca? Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I would like to echo what Christopher was saying in regards to our partnership with the developer. But in addition to that, it's uh, development services, engineering, and certainly economic development with our development continuum process uh, that we have been uh, working on uh, within our three departments, that we're absolutely eager to work on this project as well as many others along the McDowell corridor. Thank you. Thank you. And now, Joe. I feel like we have to have the rum horns rum or something, the rum roll. roll. Mayor and Council. Uh, it's my pleasure to present the item, uh, which is a, basically the preliminary plat for 
Pebble Creek Marketplace. Uh, it's lo located at the southwest corner of McDowell Road and uh, Estrella Parkway. It's about 25 acres in size. It's zoned uh, currently the Pebble Creek Marketplace planned area development C2 overlay, which you had seen back in November of last year. Uh, to orient you to the site, uh, Cobblestone uh, Creek development is to the north where the Walgreens is located. To the northeast is the Estrella Falls, uh, market at Estrella Falls. To the east is the Center Point uh, Commercial Center, and to the south is I-10 and the Walmart store. Uh, and then there's vacant land immediately to the west, which is also uh, likely to develop with commercial uses. As uh, Mr. Baker said, the preliminary plat proposes eight lots. Uh, the lot one is formally planned as the Arizona tile, which didn't materialize, but has been uh, revised on this site plan. And lot two, as was mentioned, is the planned Winco Foods uh, location. The other lots are uh, potential sites of restaurants, gas station, drive throughs shop and shops buildings, a couple of which require use permits and you may see again if once they get to the point of uh, formal proposals. The idea uh, is, that's been proposed is to construct the site into fa two phases primarily. Phase one improvements would be the Winco Foods uh, grocery store site on lot two and everything else that is not shaded that's on the uh, site plan, the conceptual site plan that's on the screen. Uh, there's additional parking that will be provided on lot six at McDowell Road of west, uh, westerly entrance. Uh, there's two driveways proposed on McDowell and two driveways proposed on Pebble Creek, or Estrella Parkway, no, Pebble Creek Parkway north of I-10. Uh, there's a traffic signal planned at McDowell Road's westerly uh, entrance which is the main entrance to the site right there. And there'll be public water and sewer stubs to all the lots and the shared retention area on lot one at the southerly boundary of the site. Also as part of the phase one improvements are the perimeter landscaping will be installed around the edge of the site and uh, partially along the uh, other entrances that are go through the other lots. Phase two would be developed as needed uh, when the pad sites are developed and they'll be reviewed uh, individually. This gives you an idea of the conceptual landscaping. This, this is only a, a portion of the detail that you will see. Uh, but as I said, the uh, landscaping will be installed along the perimeter of the site with the initial development. And then the balance will be done as the pads are developed. Um, basically, that summarizes my, uh, or concludes my presentation. If there's any questions, I'd be happy I'm to I'm sure ask. you're going to get some tonight. Yeah, this is a really <laughs> neat, neat uh, presentation on, uh, it's exciting. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? All right, Council, could I have a motion a second to approve the preliminary, I can never get that preliminary plat for Pebble Creek Marketplace, dividing 25.16 acres into eight commercial lots located at the southwest corner of McDowell and Pebble Creek Parkway within the Pebble Creek Marketplace planned area development subject to stipulations. Do I hear a motion? So move. Second. I heard a motion from Councilman Campbell and a second from Councilman Pazillo. All right, Council, open for discussion. Who would like to be first? Councilman Loretano. I, I just have two quick questions. First of all, I'm really glad that we're getting Wind Cove, that you know, we've been hearing about it for a while. Um, off of Pebble Creek Parkway, is there going to be a left turn in there, off of there, or it's hard to see? Uh, <clears throat> Mayor Lord, <coughs> Councilman Lord Tano, there's two driveway openings on Pebble Creek Parkway. One is a right in, right out, and the other one is a left in, right out. Okay. So if you're going, you can make the left in coming from, okay. That's correct. And... And then on McDowell, when that goes in, is that when the light's going to go in at the same time? It's going to go in, and they're paying. I see Rebecca going, yeah. <laughs> Mayor Lord Councilman Loretano, or Vice Mayor Loretano, that is the intent. 
is that the signal will go in at the same time as the Winco store is constructed and ready to open. Okay, that was just my two questions. Thank you. Any other? Councilman Osborne. In, in the past, we've had um, discussion on landscaping and the aligning of the trees in front of the roadway, which is beautiful, but then became an issue for the commercial buildings within. And I don't remember, you know, we, we, we talked this last year about landscaping packages and um, working with, with the development on where they're placed. There's a lot of growth here, which is beautiful, but was that conversation, did you have it occur where we're not blocking a view so much also of the buildings themselves for signage and everything? Uh, Mayor Lord, Council Member Osborne, I can't say that, that we've had the specific conversation with that, but we can adjust that in the construction drawings at the time when they come in, which would be the next step in the process. Yeah, what, what we talked about before, and I remember it distinctly, um, is about groupings, where there was space in between. So I think that's where the mm -hmm. conversation was then, so, uh, so that it isn't like constant uh, landscaping. But, and we placed those tried to place them not where the signs are, not where certain things are. So I, I think that's mm -hmm. your, your question. Mm -hmm. So you're, sh you're nodding your head, so it sounds to me like you're working on that. Or you would look at it <laughs> or consider it. Right. Yes, ma'am. Me message, <laughs> message received. Yes, we want to have a, a beautiful city, but also facilitate commerce. So we're cognizant of that. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I think what we want to do is want to learn by our mistakes. Um, and we had all a good intent when we came out in 2005, when I first saw the landscaping plan, uh, plan, you know, everybody wanted lots of trees and lots of, lots of everything, and we required uh, the commercial put a lot in, and now we see the result of that. So I just think we can be smarter, more articulate, where we're placing and still make it look great. So well, right, and and that was and that was the key point was that vegetation and landscaping and the beauty, but when it was and we always talked about tree lined streets. But when they're all at one level at the line of sight where you cannot see the signage, that, that's, you know, um, a problem. And so uh, I know that that's why looking at this, I wasn't sure if, if what we had said came to be within this project or not. So It's really at the beginning stage right, of it. Exactly. So it really exactly. is. Councilman Campbell. I just want to thank developmental services, engineering, economic development, and everyone involved in this project that you are so willing to get this up and running because the sooner the doors of Winco is open, Less the sooner <laughs> we're going to start getting revenue in this city. It's absolutely critical that we, when businesses come to us, that we do everything in our power to get them up and open as quickly as possible. And I do thank you because this has been coming for so long and we're anxious to uh, welcome them to our city, and I'm telling you, our phones are going to ring once they start moving the dirt. So are they ready to move the dirt? Just about? Um, the uh, site plan has already been approved, and we're now awaiting submission of civil drawing, construction drawings, and building uh, construction drawings. From them? From them. Okay, thank you, but we do appreciate it really very much. Councilman Pazillo. Yeah, I'm, I'm not an expert in this, so I'm trying to get some timings. Back, what, November of 14, what did we do then? What did we approve? Uh, that, uh, maybe a large councilman, uh, Pazillo, we approved a uh, modification of the zoning for the site, a comprehensive site pa uh, plant sign package, and a use permit for a large retail user. Okay. It was all zoning related. Okay, so it's my understanding back then the target was August of now to be up and running. So obviously that's not going to hit. Then we looked at January of 16 to be up and running. Any idea when the new target is, when Winco will actually be opening their doors? Do we have any ideas? Can, can I interject this, Mayor, on this? Would you explain to them, because I made a comment before I came in, um, that I have never seen such an articulate plan in, in partnership with developers on the building and the timelines and cross the T's, dot the I's, and protect the city. 
So there was, you have a time frame in which they have to, can you just elaborate that? That's what I'm trying to get to. Yeah. Because we're from November of 14 to now, and I'm just trying to get an idea when this doors will be open. And, and, and we're talking only about Winco. Yes. Okay. So, Mayor and Council Members, my name is Brandon Johnson. I'm the engineer on the project with SCJ Alliance and Winco Foods, Grace Development. Um, we've worked pretty heartily with city staff to get to this point, starting with PAD, going through site plan review, getting the preliminary plat, and now that we're at this point, we will start assuming everything goes to plan and we get approved for preliminary plat tonight, that we will start our construction documents and depending on the timeline to get that approval, once we get approval and we put a shovel in the ground, we're about 210 days to open the store, somewhere in that range. So Great. Yeah. So, okay, so if we can look at... Yeah. Yeah, well, it's not, yeah, we're trying to do the new math now. Now, uh, when <laughs> you actually months. get those plans approved, what type of timeline typically, Christopher, are we, are we thinking about that? Uh, Mayor Lord, Councilman Brazillo, we are, um, we have committed ourselves to an incredibly expedited review time and um, in the nature of the days that you can count on a hand, on a single hand. Um, it is our duty and obligation to turn ourselves inside out to help make this project a reality and that's what we're going to deliver well okay uh just other quick thing um any of you familiar with that with the safeway shopping center off of indian school and and litchfield the way that parking lot is set up and again that probably goes way way back when you go to leave and head north to like where the gasoline facility is they have it they they have the uh, parking in such a way that it's angled so when you go to leave, it's really hard to make a right-hand turn out of there because it's pointing in the wrong direction instead of being curved. So you're kind of going with a natural flow right, okay? I, I just kind of throw this out when you lay out that parking lot. Just kind of be cognizant of some of those things because when you go try to leave that Safeway parking lot, you really can't make a right if there's anything posted because you can't clear it because of the way that angle is sitting. So just a suggestion when you lay out the parking lot, just kind of keep that in mind as far as moving vehicles through there because I saw that and I'm thinking I don't know how they come up with that but again um, just think of the layout as you kind of go into there but I appreciate you coming because as a former uh, budget guy well when I see that doors open I see a lot of things and like Wally said I see revenues increasing so every day it's not open to me is a day of lost opportunity so the, the quicker that things up and rolling uh, and we, I'm glad you're coming to the city the, the better overall the city will be. Councilman Stipp. I'm going to, Joe, th this is a fairly simple question. This preliminary plat looks different than the PAD that we saw. Have there been changes in the driveway configuration off of Pebble Creek Parkway since that last design? Mayor Lord, Councilman uh, Stipp, no, there's there's been no changes in that portion of it. The only change that is uh, noticeable, if you will, was the retention area at the south end of the site. There was, uh, it was smaller, but it's the, uh, concentrated at the south end of the site now. The reason that I ask, um, and, and this is, uh, it, it's turning out to be a backhanded compliment. I didn't mean it like that. Um, it took, it's taken me a long time to get here. Anyway, um, the driveway that um, is the northernmost driveway off of Pebble Creek um, my memory was that was a, that was through all the way and that was problematic at that time. So my appreciation is that if there's been some rework of the parking lot to fix that, I'm very appreciative of that. So, um, I realize when we do a PAD amendment versus the preliminary plat, those things, that's two different things. Um, but I just wanted to acknowledge that I appreciate if maybe it was unintentional, but I appreciate the fix. Uh, no, uh, Mayor Lord, Council Member Stipp, that specific request was addressed in the site plan that was submitted and approved. Okay, so uh, we got that. And then the, the second question that nobody may really be able to answer, but I would expect Rebecca's probably going to take a swing at it. Does building these buildings help us with our noise situation off of I-10, or does it hurt that? Uh, you know, I'm trying to get to 
if we start building the buildings along McDowell, are we going to positively affect the noise issue? I don't know if you can answer that or not. Uh, I'm, I thank you, Council Member Stipp. I'm not a noise specialist, but um, from my understanding and my schooling, anything that um, can be built that um, either uh, changes the line of sight of the of the viewer to the noise, and then potentially uh, block sound is going to help. But um, buildings such as this, without a specific um, layout and not a constant layout, it probably is minimal. Okay. I just thought I'd take a swing at it. Thanks. Any other questions? Well, I, I had just one question. I thought it was so well planned, the entire area, that it seems to me that you're ready to, uh, any developer that came in, any business that wants to come in, you've already pre-planned a lot of this and how the process goes. And I don't remember that same way at the power center. This is, it seems to me we've set the, the service on this differently and better than we've done before. So just from my looking at it, and I don't know if I'm 100% correct, it looked like an outstanding plan and, and uh, you really protect the city as well as give great service to the client. So I just thank the, the teams a team that got together. I appreciate I'll just, it. I'll just make a quick comment on that. As you know, that's that's very strategic because obviously the more done it looks, the quicker that the development team can come and fill this up because the last thing you want is a commercial development that you build some infrastructure and then it, it sits empty for a while. Mm -hmm. um, so it's very strategic. This is, looks very much like a finished product when we get to this point. Well, I can tell you, I sat down with economic development and some people that might want to come, you know exactly what I'm thinking about, want to come to the city and when they see how this is is designed and how quickly I think we're going to get them. So I thank you, thank you very much. Great, great work. Okay, all right. So I guess all we're going to do is vote on this. Um, so all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. All right, let's go on. All right, we'll go to 7.3 is to consider adopting the notice of intention to increase water and wastewater rates and to set a public hearing date for the adoption of the proposed rate structure. Larry Lang, our birthday boy, a finance director to present. <laughs> <laughs> he looked at you at the top of his head. <laughs> um, certain checks will be voided from here moving forward. Um, and... Um, I guess a comment on that is, is I do not celebrate birthdays. That's something I decided when I turned 21 and I realized that the car insurance people were lying to me when they said my rates would go down. They never did. <laughs> I said, what's the point after that? <laughs> um, 2013, uh, the city procured a consultant, economist.com, to provide a, a study of our utility rates Reminder that our, our utilities that we're talking about, water and wastewater, are uh, enterprise funds, so they are required to be self-sufficient. So it's important that we have rates that are sufficient to meet our needs, both in the revenue side, but then also an important part of that is on the expenditure side. And so in 2014, as part of the integrated water master plan, that consultant also uh, determined helped us develop a five-year capital improvement plan for O&M type replacement capital and to keep the system up and running, but not, not growth-related costs. All of these were put together and reviewed by a council-appointed water planning committee, and that committee reported to the city council on June 15th of 2015 with their recommendations. Uh, the recommendations for for the rate increases, uh, originally the intent was to have a public hearing on that in September. City Council asked that to get moved back a month so that uh, if there are uh, uh, winter visitors that are in town uh, by the time of that public hearing, they would be able to participate in that discussion. State law as part of the process requires, there's, there's a number of requirements in state law, but uh, germane to tonight's issue, state law requires a notice of intention at least uh, 30 days ahead of the public hearing so that the public is informed. 
um, and also um, uh, 30 days ahead of the council consideration. And as a result of it tonight, the only action we're looking for, if you will, our actions are to schedule that public hearing for October 26th, 2015, and to adopt the notice of intention so that that can be recorded and consideration can be made on October 26th. Thank you, Larry. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? All right, could I please have a motion and a second? Now we're gonna do this in two stages, all right? Uh, to adopt the notice of intention to increase water and wastewater rates by adopting a five-year water and wastewater rate structure. Do I hear a motion and a second? So moved. Second. I heard a motion by Councilman Stiff and a second by Councilman Loritano. Open for Councilman discussion. Councilman Stiff. I find myself needing to preface my statements. I'm probably gonna drop a nuclear bomb on this thing, but I have actually a question that I should have raised earlier. So I violated all of the rules that we've laid out and I apologize for that. It was one of those things that came into my mind, slipped my mind and came back in tonight. We're talking about the rate structure. So, and the reason that I'm asking this question now is if we elect to adopt a different philosophy, is now the time? Or what I'm about to do is shed perhaps what will be a future discussion, so I'm not sure which direction we're going. But this was not intentional, so please uh, forgive me for this. Um, somewhere over the break, it became apparent to me that water and our water situation in the city is, uh, I'm going to say, critical. And it's critical for the city as a whole. Um, it's an economic development issue. It's, um, it's about keeping what we have going. And I know we've had for the longest time, if you're a water user and you've got water stuff, that you need to pay for it. But I'm wondering if at some point this is such an issue of bringing water in from the CAP canal, if the entire city shouldn't be bearing some of this burden and not putting it all on the, on the rate user. So I don't know where that question and that concept, and if it's too late, I'm okay with that answer too, because you know, if you're late to the dance, there's no one left to dance with, and I'm okay with that. So, so can, as a mayor, can uh, I say, so you're saying uh, not, it would, our water would not be an enterprise system any longer? No, no, no. What I'm suggesting with, because this has been the way, I under, the way that I understand this, we're really talking about two different things. One is an O&M of the water system, and the other is, a, I'm going to say it this way, capital improvement of the water. Uh, we need to get the water brought in from, uh, from the CAP or from somewhere else. And it's going to come through the north of I-10 you know, part of the city to get to the south of I-10 where our actual quote-unquote water users are. But it is an integral part in what we're trying to do for the city as a whole that perhaps it shouldn't just be the water customers that are bearing the burden that even those of us who live north of I-10 should probably share a little bit into that. And, and like I said, I may be coming from way off a of left field, but it seemed, you know, we've tried very hard to be very equitable about it. And it just seemed to kind of make sense that this is a city issue. It's not a water user issue. And that perhaps it should be. And so I don't know when this discussion should happen. So I, I'm, I'm really... And again, I absolutely want to apologize for not mentioning this earlier. And I even had breakfast with the manager this morning and it didn't even pop up. Um, um, Mayor, uh, Councilman Stipp, if I could answer that. Um, the, the hearing is a notice of intent, or that's what we're adopting tonight. And the recommendations of our consultant and the committee are presented tonight. The city council is not restricted, as I understand it, and... Uh, uh, city attorney could correct me if he felt I was mistaken, but city council is not restricted to yes or no on that question should the city council decide to, to do a policy change of that effect. I would like to, uh, though, because of that particular issue, the way the water, CAP water, is being dealt with, in it, and I'm talking the pure water rights, which I believe is what you're referring to, the way that those are programmed within this uh, plan 
is on a per gallon or per thousand gallon charge. And so the rates that would be effective January 1st of, 12, of 2016 for all other things would be $12.70. Um, uh, oh wait, no, that's the base meter charge. I'm sorry, it would vary from $1.47 to $7.06 per thousand gallons. The rate for the CAP water alone would be 40 cents. So it's a small part of the total water bill. One of the things that the committee recommended as part of this, and um, I think when we had the previous discussion that the city council thought made sense was to disclose that on the bill as a separate line charge. Mm -hmm. uh, because this really is based on the water consumed by the consumer, the logic you know, does make sense. However, bringing water in as, as a larger part of the issue, understanding if that is the city council's wish, but that would be changing the budget policy that enterprise funds are self-sustaining, and you could consider that on October 26th if you uh, desired to. And if, so, and I think that was, I'm not, I'm not saying it's gonna affect anything tonight, but so either my discussion tonight was the exposure to do we want to have this discussion later on? And when is that time? So October 26th is the answer to that. Um, and again, if it's way too late because the calculations have already been made to determine the rates and blah, 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 it, you know, the good idea fairy came one night and that was the end of it. So I, I just, I didn't want this to go by without having at least thrown it out there and, um, and, and, and just kind of con for consideration. I don't think it affects the vote on item one or item two on this because we need to set the rate, we need it. So, but I just wanted to, like I said, throw it out there. And again, I really want to apologize for not getting this ahead of, out ahead of time. Councilman Pazillo. Yeah, if we change, <clears throat> excuse me, if we change our policy, to me that's almost <clears throat> a discussion we would, might want to have at, at the advance but again, from my perspective, at the, retreat, you mean. At the retreat. retreat, from my perspective, we are running a business called the Goodyear Water Company that should be covering its cost just like any other business, like uh, the, uh, what is it, Liberty Water or anything else. If we're going to change or look at changing the policy to what benefits the whole, because we left that for the current policy, <clears throat> then I think we need that discussion at the retreat to see if that's what we want to do. I'm going to direct something to the, to the city manager <clears throat> a moment. Uh, yes, one, one point of clarification is this uh, is a five-year IWMP that we're focused on. Um, so, and, and I think it's known, but just for the public, if they're listening, this will not actually have any delivery of CAP water to us, whether it's transmitted, um, treated at the um, EPCOR site. So that's outside this five years we're looking at. Um, so just wanted to point that out. Uh, as well, just to, uh, to avoid any confusion. Now, we do recharge and those types of things to be able to take our allocation. Um, but the other point is, uh, is for consideration at council, and this would be down the road, is there an opportunity um, to use other funds to offset some of the capital costs for eventually bringing CAP water to the city? And that certainly can be talked about at the retreat that is looking out a little ways. Um, but that would be uh, certainly a good time as, and, and any time even thereafter. Um, for example, could you use one-time monies uh, to be able to offset some of those um, construction costs to bring that water here? And those are definitely policy considerations. Essentially not changing our enterprise system. But or, adding. Well, at that it, point, it, that still would be, but it, I it, think the point is when you have the dialogue. All right, all right. Mayor, if I can just follow because go ahead, Bill. With this, these the the rate increases that we're talking about did not contemplate capital improvements. Is that correct? No, they did contemplate capital improvements. There was a significant discussion uh, held by the committee. Some were delayed because uh, to yeah. smooth the rates out. Uh, but the types of capital improvements that we're talking about that the rate study contemplated are, are um, like a backup for wells. If you lose one well, you lose the majority of your production. 
you've got some 50-year-old wells that need replacement. They're all replacement okay. and ongoing type costs. The capital and improvements that Mr. Dawkey is referring to um, for bringing the water down here, that w those capital improvements are primarily looked at starting, you know, probably about eight, nine, ten years from now, and they okay. are not part of this rate study. For those of you familiar with Roseanne, Rosanna Dana, never mind. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, who else? Anybody? Well, I think our enterprise system has been very well done. I remember when we, no, so thank you, uh, because uh, I don't want to give that impression that we're going to go out and be doing changing that. And I think that the committee or the ad hoc committee really gave us really solid information and opinions. And, and so I, I was, I, I want to thank them because they really did um, contemplate just about every bit of information you gave them. And they came forth with some suggestions, and I think one of them was uh, a higher payment, a higher increase at the beginning rather than at the end of the rate. Was that at the rate? Isn't that how? Just the opposite. Just the opposite. The original okay. recommendation had a considerably higher upfront increase, okay. and they dropped it down. Down. Almost and a just third. the opposite. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, they weighed into this. So, mm -hmm. sorry, I got that mixed up. Hmm. Okay. Any other comments? All right, could I, I've had a motion, so all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. The ayes have it. Could I have a motion <laughs> to set October 26, 2015 as a date for the public hearing on the adoption of the proposed water and wastewater rate structure? Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. I heard a, a motion by Councilman Stiff and a second by Vice Mayor Laura Tano. Open for council discussion. No. <laughs> well, I was actually again. looking at Joe because I thought his finger was going like, no. is anything I'm else? Good. Okay. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you very much, Larry. 7.4 is to consider approving matching, to approving match funding for transportation projects that will be submitted to the Maricopa Association of Governments for federal assistance. Rebecca Zook, Engineering Director to present. Rebecca? Good evening again, Mayor and Council. I'm here to uh, recommend approval of an amount not to exceed $50,000 for the city to match, uh, uh, city match for a federal uh, funded project program through MAG, Maricopa Association of Governments. MAG has uh, placed a call for projects that are due September 21st. Those projects are to be executed in the fiscal year 17 through 19. As part of that call for projects, they have also had special funding that was allocated for those cities that are partaking of the special census. The city of Goodyear's portion of that special uh, census fund is $785,000. So with that, we began to pursue and look at different projects that we had in, within our CIP and then also within our future transportation plan to see what projects could fall into this criteria. I would like to uh, take a moment and share with you the different criteria that is required. And all of these are related to conge congestion, mitigation, air quality. And those projects uh, must be transportation related. But the transportation isn't specific to automobile traffic. It's pedestrian, bicycle traffic. It can also be message boards that speak to the driver that tells them that there's uh, congestion ahead, gives them a, re, uh, a, route, a different route to take, something that lets them know that there is congestion ahead. Because ultimately, these projects are related to moving traffic and limiting congestion. Another criteria is that it must uh, minimize emissions such as, again, keeping traffic moving, such as an HOV lane or something to that. Uh, in addition, uh, although traffic signals aren't considered uh, projects, fiber that connects those traffic signals is considered allowable because, again, it keeps the, the traffic moving along a corridor. And then finally, it needs to be part of an air quality non-containment area and benefit the air. So for instance, if you have an unpaved road, paving that road would count. And 
<clears throat> one of the other items we did was we looked at our CIP. And I'll just give a couple examples of the ones that we looked at. So Van Buren from Australia Parkway to Saravel, widening, we looked at that, but widening is not considered one of the project requirements. In addition, again, traffic signals, but traffic signals don't count either, but the fiber that connects them does count. And then Saravel Avenue improvements, again, that's the widening. Uh, pavement management program, this would be not for repairing pavement, but for actually adding uh, paving to roads that are, um, I think I have that, <clears throat> to dirt roads. And then finally, safe routes to schools. This would be considered for elementary and middle school schools and safe routes, but ultimately it's for significant projects. So significant infrastructure uh, added to that. So just to give you an example, there are um, <clears throat> one leg of our fiber, uh, um, the environmental clearance for one leg of the fiber can cost up to $50,000. And ultimately it has to have an environmental clearance because it's associated with federal funding. So with that said, um, we'll be happy to share with you, answer any questions, and then share with you the project that was proposed. Thank you. Could I have a motion a second, please? So moved. Second. Okay. I heard a motion from Councilman Bazil and a second from Councilman Laura, uh, no, Councilman Osborne, thank you. Open for council discussion. No discussion. Uh, no. Councilman Stipp. Be polite. Uh. Um, so the um, the half road improvement on Goodyear Boulevard around the high school and the base of school, you know, we only did half of it this year. We've got the other half to go. That, that's a safe, that improves traffic flow around the school, et cetera. That is not eligible, or was it looked at? Explain that aspect of it. Because I think um, we're paying for that with general fund money. That is correct. And again, we did look at all of the projects. I just gave you some examples. Again, that would be considered a widening of the roadway. And it's to ultimately, it wasn't specific to the schools. Today, the schools can function with the, the roadway that we have. Ultimately, that is a uh, to create a, a circulator around the city center. And again, a widening of a roadway would not count. Take that one step further, council member. Um, anytime you introduce the federal process, you're looking also at an investment of time. An environmental process for a road like Goodyear Boulevard would have been in excess of about two years. And we would have had to do the entire project from design all the way through construction using the federal process. So if we had done the design locally, we couldn't ask for federal funds for construction. Okay. And that applies to all of the projects that we looked at. Um, and that, while we have had some success in the city, for instance, the park and ride, um, using the federal process, there are certain projects that we wouldn't look at just because we're under a deadline. Okay, thanks. And then the second question that I had is, we're tying, and I had a great uh, education from uh, Bob and, and Luke, you know, about a year ago about, about the timing of our traffic lights. And it was very nice of Ms. Kirschbaum tonight to congratulate us on getting the traffic flowing, but there's not a day that doesn't go by that I don't hit every single traffic light down Bullard or every single traffic light down Litchfield. And I'm really struggling with, we're gonna connect them all by fiber and we're still not getting anything for that. We are not improving the traffic flow and I understand the timing and whatnot, but um, I'm, I'm not gonna say I'm hesitant, I just, it's a huge frustration as me as a, as a motorist, as I hear from my neighbors, my family, you know, uh, those of us on the, the council that experience this every day, we have got to do something or we shouldn't talk about synchronized lights in the city. <laughs> Just, so if we're going to put this investment in, are we, what are we really getting for it other than we can communicate with them remotely because we're certainly not able to, uh, to affect the flow of traffic. Uh, thank you very much for that uh, uh, comment, Council Member Stipp. Um, and I absolutely appreciate what you're saying. And again, this is an additional uh, corridor that we wanted to add into this that links all the way up to uh, Australia Mountain Ranch. 
uh, but with respect to um, Bullard and Litchfield, um, and I know that, um, that we have been trying to put together a yellow paper, and I'd like to commit to doing that, that really further explains that process and the various items that could impact those uh, the, the continuation of the cycles of the lights, because there are numerous things that do impact that, but ultimately we need to attempt to minimize those so that we do achieve uh, the constant flow of traffic, because not only does that help with the congestion, but it also makes our drivers much uh, more pleased. Okay, thanks. Any other, dis oh, Council Councilman Osborne. I, I just wanted to say thank you, because I, I know that there's, places all over our city that we want to see changes and we certainly want to see the fiber there to have the synchronized lights all of that but you know I appreciate the fact that we're working on the truck traffic flow and and I know that um, the people on Saraville the people on Bullard the ones that are affected that getting it back to Cotton Lane again is very important and um, back to safety with our citizens back to the complaints we've always heard about the track traffic and then you know the the conditions of our roads because of getting trucks back on a street that really was built for that type of heaviness and in, in traffic so I, I'm, I'm happy to see this you know um, I do appreciate it thank you yes council on campbell okay I'm I'm really at a loss of why we're doing it I mean I don't get it I'm sorry I mean, we do fiber and nothing happens. We do fiber and it, nothing happens. And we get federal funds and we do a little bit and we never get it all done. But how are you going to tell the trucks to go to Cotton Lane? Are we putting up another digital sign or what are you doing? I mean, how are you going to encourage them by us doing this that they're going to go to Cotton Lane? Thank you very much for the, the question. Ultimately, the reason that trucks take other routes today is because they don't have to stop at stop signs or they don't have they have a free flow of traffic and so ultimately creating this environment where we have fiber along that corridor all the way down cotton to the macy's and amazon area and then hopefully we would be putting forward because we're constantly again looking at our intersections and the traffic that Hopefully, one of those signals or stop sign areas is one of the next signals that we come to you with, because creating an ultimate corridor for that area where Macy's and Amazon is is, is one of our key focuses. And so um, we're constantly working with economic development, and then with this, economic development has been involved, and they would coordinate and reach out to the, uh, the owners in that area and certainly encourage the use of that route. So we're just going to have a shovel-ready project if, in the event we get funding from MAG. And it's going to be that we're just going to run a bunch of more fiber optics somewhere in the city, basically. That is correct. We are okay. going to add in fiber. Got it. Any other? Well, I will say I drive by Bullard, and it does get frustrating. But uh, I've learned now I leave five minutes earlier than I left before. So uh, when we're talking about the public and, and the travel, toil, toil, I can't go straight through. The city's growing. You're not going to get your way. Leave a few minutes early. Get up in the morning early. Plan your day. I just think this gets to be uh, na 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 na, and it's going to be. We are growing. People are moving into our city. We are going to have traffic. You can't do anything about it. You can't tell the people. You can't move in because I'm not going to get uh, every light. I'm going to be late to this. It's, again, citizens' responsibility of their schedule. And we're doing everything we can. If the citizens would like utopia, we'll raise your taxes and try to give it to you. But the way the setup is, we're not going to do it. So we need to get out there and not grow these complaints. We need to tell the public the truth. And let's leave it at that. That's all I'm going to say. Thank you very much for the presentation. Okay, so we have to vote, right? Are we there? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Oppose? The ayes have it. All right, it's time for council uh, comments. And I'm going to start it off, which is unusual. Uh, but I want to thank my vice mayor uh, tremendously for... Uh, taking a number of events for me while I was on 
a vacation and it was very nice. As some of you know, I didn't take all the summer off during the time that you did. <laughs> um, and so this was a special time and I really appreciate it. And then to council, many of you, Cheryl Lynn, I know, you, uh, many of you attended events um, even on your time off. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I appreciate that. So who would like to talk? Anything you've done you want to tell about? No? I, I would like to mention one, and that was the, uh, well, actually there were two um, memorance, remembrances um, of the 9-11 event that, that um, occurred 14 years ago. And uh, while very different, they both were very respectful. But I was very impressed with the Odyssey School and the poetry written by the children and the respect they paid our officers and firemen. Um, I thought I, I really um, uh, send my accolades to the staff for helping the children understand what that was all about. I thought that was excellent. And um, the uh, pancake breakfast, again, the remembrance of our fire uh, firemen and our policemen that put that together and all the businesses that um, were participated so that it would be a minimal cost to the city. I love that huge flag that is raised on the fire truck. I think that's very impressive and very meaningful to me, but I am a flag person, so things like that. Get, um, anyway, I just wanted to uh, also commend the fire and police for that great event on Sunday morning. Thank you. I'm sorry that I was out of town and couldn't be there. And secondly, to add on to that, I want to thank police and fire for giving us all the notifications of what's going on in the city. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know you don't always hear from us. I'm hesitant to answer you because you're busy with, with your work. So, but we, I think really all of us really were kept update all through the summer. Anybody else? No? Okay. It's over to you, city manager. Uh, Mayor, members of the council, I do have a few announcements. One is, been trying to keep council updated as far as the continuing development of Harkins. Uh, so one of the things you'll now see the general contractors at on site, AA builders uh, began construction last week, so you'll continue to see a lot of activity. And one of the things that we did is we posted that uh, activity on Facebook and Twitter. And just to give you an idea of the amount of interest, 5,600 Facebook reaches is what that went out to. And on the posting, and 117 Twitter impressions. So trying to get that information out there to the public. Uh, the other is on the 9-11 uh, Memorial Pancake Breakfast. Uh, thank you for recognizing that. Just a couple of points I would add is that we had about 900 attendees there. Wow. And that raised $1,400 for the uh, uh, UGFF charities. So that's uh, uh, United Goodyear Firefighters Charities. Uh, but what, one of the things that was very beneficial is all the leftover food, the pancakes, the eggs, and everything else that was there was donated to local women's shelters, so we actually got additional benefit out of that. And, you know, thank you for recognizing the sponsors who made that possible. There were several. I'll hit those just real quickly. Wigwam Resort, Starbucks, Hickman's, Village Inn, Sugar and Spice, McLean's, um, Hilger's Orth. Hilger's Orthodontic and Dental Group, Easy Towing, and then Desert Edge Football and Wrestling Teams. My goodness, there are a couple of big football dudes here that I would not want to be on the other side of the line from. And then uh, the last comment I want to make is on the City of Goodyear website. We did win the uh, 3CMA Silver Circle Award. So we have been working for a lot of years to improve our website. So this is exciting to win the, the Silver Circle Award for the category Digital Interactive Overall Website. Um, so this, uh, if you think about the City County Communications and Marketing Association, 3CMA, it's, it reviews and lauded more than 12,000 national entries in this competition. So uh, it recognizes the best in the art of communications and marketing. The judges had a couple of comments to make. One is a well-written descriptive letter as far as uh, what it is that we're accomplishing with our website. Uh, but they really like the unique search bar and the incorporation of, of the images. And lastly, they felt that the website has a different look and feel than other government websites um, and is still very convenient and functional. 
and fantastic use of pictures. So um, thank you for your patience over the years. We worked hard on it, and it's nice to be recognized for those efforts. So uh, applaud staff for all the work behind the scenes. That's all. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Council Councilman Osborne had one more thing. Thank you, Georgia, uh, Mayor. Uh, actually, uh, it was interesting. This is kind of an informational, but um, Brian, I wanted you to know about it, that um, this last weekend, uh, my, my eldest daughter is trying to move to Texas on me, and so I'm doing the motherly duty of checking out the city and town that she's looking at moving to. And uh, as I was doing that, I discovered that when you put in a city – the city's website will come up, but the next um, website is called citydata.com. Maybe you know of that. But then as I went to that, all of the hard facts of a city are on there. The population, the income, the crime rates, the you know everything that you would really be looking for about a city is in there. Not all of it is up-to-date information. So I went, you know, I'm checking this Texas city out. Well, I went to Goodyear's to compare, to just kind of feel it out. And I, and I saw, you know, interesting information. But what I thought was very important was that then you find our citizens talk to these people that are wanting to check out our city, that are considering moving here or businesses are coming. We've got citizens talking to these people, you know, just as an open forum. And it's always very positive. So that was exciting. But some of the information that was dated and old, I really thought that proactively, especially after our census is done, if we can contact this company who does this website, this is obviously a well-used city data type of um, website that, you know, the nation's using. And so it was like, get our new numbers, get our information the most up-to-date we can in there about even the schools they have school information there whatever we can because there were things in there from as as old as 2000 up to 2013 maybe 2014 but you know we know what we have here and we don't want to be our best kept secret and so when people are out there and we have our citizens talking to you know these potential new citizens company we want to make sure our data is up to date so i just wanted to bring that to your attention Thanks. great thank you Anything else from the council? I've got an inquiry to the city manager, please. Yes, Councilman um, Campbell. I uh, to the city. This is to the city manager. That um, Scottsdale was looking into the to possibly uh, solicit for the good Google Fiber. They've gone to the East Valley. I'd like us to stay um, somewhere in the loop, and while we may not be successful, I'd like to get a conversation about Goodyear getting the Google Fiber on the west side somehow, or at least a conversation with someone, if possible. Sure. I know we don't have the fiber, and I know we don't have all this other stuff, and it may be insurmountable, but hopefully someday we would be successful and, and be one of the cities that they would be willing to come in and put their fiber in for us. Do you, do you want to address uh, Mayor, this? Council Member Campbell, we would absolutely love to be one of those Google cities. I, I think it was a little over a year ago where we pursued that pretty hard, and we were told mm, you don't have a chance right now, but uh, but come back and and talk to us again in the future. So it's something we'll continue to look at. You bet. Okay. If there's nothing else, I'm going to adjourn this meeting. Uh, but before I do, the future meeting will be a work session on September 21st. And then, you know, as I adjourn this, we're going to go into a special meeting, so don't move, okay? <laughs> meeting adjourned. All right, like to call to order uh, the Monday, September 14th special meeting. Um, I, we are all here, and so I need a, a couple of motions. I need a motion here, and I have three, two things to read, so just hold up. I would like a motion.